Welcome, welcome. To create a welcome campaign in Brevo, start by going to the left navigation and clicking on automations. Click on create your first automation. Click on the welcome message pre-built automation and it'll bring up a preview of what the automation and the workflow looks like. So you can scroll through it. We'll click on use this automation. Select the list of contacts that you want to apply this workflow to. Click next. Set the amount of time you want the workflow to wait before proceeding to the next step. Since this is a welcome message, we want to contact the user, the new member, as soon as possible. So we'll put one minute, click next, and then select the email template. We'll create a new email template for this example. Enter the template name. We'll call this welcome email. Enter the subject line. You can say something like welcome to the, and then insert your company or organization name. And you can also use personalization here. You can click on the add personalization button and use an attribute like first name. If the attribute is empty, you can also input a value here to use in place of that and then insert it. Add preview text so you can give your audience a quick preview of what's in the welcome email among their list of all their other emails. Scroll down, choose a from email. If you want to send an email from another email address that's not associated with your Brevo account yet, click on add a new sender. Input the information for the new sender, click on save. Make sure your company name is right. You can customize the reply to address. You can input another email address. You can customize the to field including using attributes of the contact. For example, you can use the contact attributes for the first name and last name instead of email address in the to field to make it seem more personal to your contacts. I would activate the Google Analytics tracking so you can send parameters, you can send data to Google Analytics for source, medium, and campaign that way you can easily identify traffic from your Brevo campaigns. And if you want to allow users, allow your contacts to update their profile form, you can do that. It'll add a link at the bottom of your email for a form like this, where they can update their contact information. You can add tags for this email template so you can easily find assets related to any emails that you send or for any campaigns. You can add attachments as well, but I would be careful with this one because emails with attachments might trigger some flags in email clients and filter your emails to spam. Click on next in the top right corner. Here's where you'll design the actual email. Brevo gives you a couple different options. First, there are the layout templates. It gives you default template, a template to sell your product, tell a story, register for an event, start from scratch, or a simple template. You can preview each of these templates by clicking on this magnifying glass here. So you can see it lays out the different elements of the email. Then there's the template gallery. You can search through different types of templates based on what you want to send to the audience. For example, they have onboarding, blog posts, new product announcement, notifications, etc. We'll choose one of the templates from the release. But to show you the other options, there are my templates, which are templates that already exist in Brevo. For example, these are the default templates that it gives you out of the box. Then you can code your own template, your own email. You can use a rich text editor or paste your own HTML code. We'll go back to this template gallery and click on this release template. Brevo loads what I call the email design lab. And if Brevo starts using that, I want royalties. But this is where you can highlight all the elements in the email to edit them. It gives you all these blocks that you can use. But before we dig into that, I want to highlight the style section. This is where you can set up your branding. If you click on set up brand, it brings you to a page where you can 
pick up brand assets from your website. So if you input your website in this field here, it can detect your brand assets or you can set up your brand manually by uploading images for your logos, setting your color, setting the font and paragraph settings, social media links, etc. You can also set up your branding in this left panel here as well. Scroll down, click on the template, drop down, set the color for the background with an image or clicking on this square here, insert an image from a URL or set the body color, these body settings. Configure the text appearance by selecting the font and the font size as well as the color for each of these font styles. The headings, set the link appearances, set up your branding for buttons, for the font, font size, color, styling, bold, and you can configure spacing as well with the padding. Go back to the content section and you'll see most of these blocks are pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward. There is a block for HTML code where you can enter HTML to style your email. I'll call out these formats right here. There's a style for an image and then text below it. There's a two column format where you have image on the left, text on the right, a three column format where you have images at the top and then text below. There's a divider that will give you a visible divider. If you click on it, you can set the color by clicking on this square for the color. Make sure it's visible. To delete an element, make sure the element is selected. Then click on this trash icon. Confirm the deletion. You can add a navigation block to link to different web pages on your website. To do that, click on the link, highlight it, and click this add link icon. Set the link type, set it as an external link, a standard link for unsubscribe or double opt-in. Set an anchor link. Input your link target here, and you can give it a link title as well. Once you're done, click on insert. So you can link to, for example, if you're working with the Jordan brand, for example, you can link to new releases, Jordan basketball, or any of these category pages on the website. So we'll delete this element. There's a spacer here you can insert, and it's different from a divider in that it's not visible. Here you'll just set the width and the height as well as the block alignment. If you do want to make it visible, you can change the color for that. For each block, you can move it by clicking on it and dragging it, move it up, duplicate it. You can also save it so that it appears in the save block section here. To add personalization elements, drag the text block over, highlight the entire text, we'll type hi, and then click on the three dots to show more elements. Click on this icon, this profile icon, and select the attribute that you want to add. So we can add first name. And if the value is empty, you can type in, hi there. Configure any advanced conditions. If any of these elements contains certain characters or whatever condition, then insert this attribute. For example, if a contact is part of your personal use contact list, say, this to equals, for example, yes or no, and then set another condition if you want, or you can delete the condition, then insert this text or another attribute. Else, insert another attribute, but we'll keep it simple. Click on insert, 
and an exclamation point. We'll change the logo here. So click on it, set up brand. I'm going to click on this container here, go to spacing and remove the top padding. So we can close that gap. I'm going to add a text block here below the greeting. Let's highlight it, all the text. Click AI to use the AI assistant. We'll click on generate a paragraph and give it a prompt. As a company encouraging its community to achieve its dream goals, write a welcome email. And we'll copy this, paste it in this text area, but we'll trim this down a little bit. There's a good message for the community and we can remove this from the original template. We've simplified this email edit this button here, make sure it has a link to it, and then go down and edit the footer, edit the social media icons, make sure you have your links to them. You can choose to customize the design and edit the layout and the spacing. Add your company address. You need your company address and contact information as well as the unsubscribe link or button to comply with email marketing and communications regulations. So make sure you check what those regulations are. Go to the top and preview your email in mobile to make sure everything looks good. And aside from previewing between desktop and mobile, you can send a test email by clicking on this icon at the top. This is what the email looks like with no value for the first name as it replaces it with there. You can click on preview as a customer where you can go to the right and select from the recipient drop down, search for a contact, but the contact has to be added to your contact list. So there it changes the personalization for the first name attribute here. If you want to send it to yourself, you also need to have your email, your test email address uploaded to the contact list. And once you populate the recipient field, you can send a test email. Even to send test emails, you still need to contact Breville support to enable that for you before the first time you send one. So you can click out of that. You can also create other type of welcome emails. If you Google Brevo welcome email, you'll come across this article and you can see the different types that you can create. They have examples here. You can offer a special gift. You can create an onboarding welcome email, a gated content delivery, or other types of emails. And these are the examples that they have. You can use this for inspiration and use some of these designs. If you click on these three dots in the top right corner, you can view version history, which you can also do by clicking on this clock icon and this text up here to see previous versions. Again, you can preview it, look at keyboard shortcuts, view your brand library, save it, make sure you save every once in a while, and you can also save it as a PDF. If you click on save and quit, it'll bring you to this screen where you don't have to go into design mode to access functionality like sending a test email or previewing the email. But here you can also share the template, reset the template. And of course you can go back into the design mode by clicking on edit content. So this page gives you your preview right here and make sure you click on save and activate. That way your email is ready to go. If you're happy with the design and the testing, navigate back to automations from the left menu, click on your welcome message, make sure your contact list is selected, click on next, and you may have to reconfigure all of these again. Next, and we'll choose our email template. 
All right, number six, welcome email. If you want to configure any of these other settings, feel free to do so, but we don't want to do any of that. You may want to use event data to customize the email, but that's for another video. We'll click on finish. So you can see the workflow starting from the entry point when the contact has been added to this contact list. It'll wait for one minute and then it'll send the welcome email. After that, the workflow is finished. Test your workflow to make sure it works as expected by clicking on this icon with a flask. Enter the contact with which you want to test your workflow. You can skip the wait for steps, then click done. Later on, when you want to check the performance of the workflow, click on this icon to view the stats. And lastly, click on activate automation. Now your welcome email is ready to go. You can change the status from active to pause. That means no new contacts will enter the workflow, but existing contacts already in the workflow will continue, or you can set the status to inactive. And that means no new contacts will enter and any existing contacts in the workflow will be removed. If you want more content on working with digital marketing, audience, customer, or user data, subscribe to the channel.